Hey everybody, welcome back to the Riff On Podcast. This is episode number 12, and I was just looking back through the records, and this is the first episode in over a year and a half. Where 2019 went, it it, it went. It, it was a typical year, I guess you could say. 2020 kind of came in with uh, much uh, pomp and circumstance, but we all know that it's gone to hell in a handbasket uh, really quick, and... We've all been locked up, locked down, quarantined, in place, unemployed for 110 days now. And I figured now was as good of a time to fire up a podcast, talk about a few things that have been on my mind that have happened to me personally, and talk about maybe what's going to go on moving forward. My name's Eric D. I'm recording this on July 7th, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And tomorrow, well, hopefully when I officially post this, will be my 100th day taking part in the ketogenic diet. And I will say 110 days of unemployment. And it's been a rather interesting ride. And as per norm, I don't have anything really written down, of course, thought out because I'm a spontaneous individual. So I'm just going to kind of shoot from the hip. And despite the fact that I always told myself I wasn't a big fan of uh, solo voice podcasts, I've done one before on my other podcast. And this will be my first one on Riff On, but this could be the last one as well. And we'll talk a little bit more on that. So, well, we all know really some of the big stories that have happened here in 2020. And of course, amongst them is the global pandemic that we've all been shuttered in from for going on really, I guess here in Vermont, 115 days, let's say, right around mid-March, it's when we officially threw in the towel, the governor shut down schools, and everyone knew pretty much right off the bat, well, this is business, but of course we didn't know how long it was going to go, so I believe March 18th was my kid's last day of school. It was a Wednesday. I've got a first grader and a third grader, or they were in first and third grade. And I was wrapping up uh, really year five of work. And uh, two days into homeschooling, I got the call that I probably should file unemployment. I knew things weren't super great in this very small business that I work for. But I didn't know that we needed to reach that point. But it was really, it was a smart business decision rather than outlaying more expenses than we already had to uh, file unemployment. And uh, I went ahead and did so on uh, March 20th. And like many Vermonters, I wasn't able to get through to unemployment for a couple of weeks' time. I had difficulty filing. I had difficulty opening up my uh, PIN number, my case, and what have you. And uh, luckily, all that worked out um, eventually, and I started getting paid, and I've been unemployed since then. But about, uh, let's say... 10 days really into this whole on shutdown of COVID here in Vermont, quarantine, lock in place thing. Uh, I had had some thoughts on my mind to uh, jump whole hog into keto because my weight was starting to go up. I was starting to have uh, an everyday drinking occurrence, namely uh, Vermont beers. And uh, well, it seemed like our environment was going to be very controlled Uh, at least for a short period of time. And I thought, well, no time like the present to jump into the keto diet and clean myself up a little bit. So, you know, March 21st or so, we were home from school and I was kind of overseeing the kids and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And then the following week, uh, Saturday, March 28th, the last beer I've opened and drank, it's been a hundred days and uh, it's been an interesting run along the way. So Sunday, the 29th, I kind of woke up with a, a little bit of a hangover. I'm fortunate that really I can probably count the number of hangovers I've actually technically had on two hands, uh, despite the amount I drink. But uh, Monday, March 30th went in and this was essentially the 
guess, the second week of uh, unemployment. And uh, I just decided, well, I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to really overthink it because I know from my experience that if I do so, I'm going to fail. I also said I'm not going to make this harder than it should be. So I decided right off the bat that even though I should be tracking my intake with protein and carbohydrates, which for those of you that don't and aren't familiar with a keto diet, it's a, a very, very low carb, averaging 20 to 30 carbs per day, ideally, a diet with uh, basically 30% protein and the rest from healthy fats. And um, I'm just going to do it and uh, it, eat mindfully, eat what I'm supposed to from a list that I pulled off the internet and just kind of go with it. I had been informing myself from the words of Thomas DeLauer for those that are familiar with keto. You've probably heard the name. For those that aren't, you should uh, check him out. I'll have him in the uh, the show notes if you're interested in, in the keto diet. And I just kind of went into it with, well, you know, I know I can eat this. I can't eat that. I can't drink really alcohol is the idea and certainly beer. And I learned that I'm an all or nothing type of individual. So I said, well, I'm just going to kind of go into this, see how I do does. And, uh, I thought at first, well, I need to get a little bit of exercise under my belt. So I thought I would just move daily as per my Fitbit. And I think I had clocked it down all the way to 20 minutes. But I said, well, if I can legitimately get 20 minutes of recognized activity on my Fitbit per day, that's a, that's a good start. And rather than, uh, you know, coming out of this COVID-19 with 19 extra pounds, as I thought a lot of people were going to be heading that direction, me included, I decided that I would maybe see about shedding some uh, COVID-19. And that's kind of how I went into it. You know, none of us knew at the time how far, how severe, uh, what the exact circumstances were going to be with our quarantines, our shutdowns. But we knew that for the foreseeable future, there was going to be this locked in place. Um, I have a daughter that actually lives in Los Angeles with her mom, and uh, she had graduated in January virtual high school after a couple of years of a virtual high school in California. She joined CC uh, Community College and uh, was actually starting to be attending classes in person uh, uh, basically in February. She was pretty excited about that. It had been a year since she'd really been regularly seeing kids and uh, she was fast on her way to turning 18 on March 20th. Well, uh, lo and behold, come uh, March 20th, she's two weeks into a lockdown and about to turn 18 and she's still riding it out in Los Angeles. Here we are just after the July 4th weekend and they just are relocking down circumstances out there, including the beaches. So uh, I can only imagine what some of these people have gone through here in Vermont. We've made the news actually just these last couple of days of uh, having some of the lowest numbers and lowest uh, percentage increase uh, in the nation. We've only really had uh, just under 1,100 cases across the state. Of course, we're only a population of 620,000. So we've had some very, very low numbers, including something around 60 deaths. So we've been very fortunate. But going back into March, late March, you know, we were two weeks into this COVID-19. And really, we just had no idea, of course, how bad it was going to be, how long it was going to go. So I thought to myself, well, my environment is going to be very controlled. They were basically telling us to only go out for essentials. I was unemployed, so I wasn't going to be traveling like I typically do. So with no restaurants in sight and no eating out and uh, even eating at a friend's house, I thought, well, I'm just going to really watch what, what I eat and uh, try this keto thing out and see what I can do for a little while. And I uh, I saw results, at least on the scale, right off the bat. They say, of course, a lot of it is water weight that you shed within the first couple of weeks. And I think I shed well over 10 pounds the first week alone and saw immediate success. And I'm very much an instant gratification person, which is, I think, was why I love social media so much because of the instant gratification. But so I was seeing some visual results right off the bat. I thought, well, this is great. So I'm going to stick with it. It's, it's, it's working. I'm not tracking anything at all. I'm just eating until I'm full, eating protein at a healthy amount and trying to eat as healthy of protein as possible. I guess I should say that uh, we also lucked into buying 50 pounds of grass fed beef in February from a very, very good friend in Southern Vermont course, not knowing that COVID-19 was going to be coming up. So we happened to fill our freezer with 50 pounds of really, really good cattle and uh, worked out well. And I just was eating some of that great burgers. Uh, of course, no buns, no bread, 
with uh, vegetables and uh, mainly above ground green vegetables like broccoli and, and asparagus and Brussels sprouts and things like that. And really sticking to that. And then when it came to healthy fats, cooking things uh, in butter, in uh, avocado oil, doing guacamole on salads, which ends up being just this amazing dressing I learned about a couple of years ago. And continuing to really eat that way, of course, just drinking black coffee in the morning, uh, water and uh, my seltzers, which I've just recently so to speak, the last couple of years discovered. Of course, these are non-alcoholic seltzers, and that's all I was really drinking. So, um, you know, March, of course, crept into April. I should say crept. Of course, we all know that how long March went, seemingly took through the, those weeks uh, of the first shutdown. But uh, April came in, and I was like, well, I'm just going to stick with it. And, uh, you know, before I knew it, it was really three, four weeks into keto. I was still seeing good success. The weight was still coming off. And I should say I was weighing, I weighed in at about 235 on uh, March 20th, and I just crept way up there. My very, very low point at one time in my life when I was on maybe Atkins and really exercising, walking, and, and watching what I ate was, I believe, 174. And I want to say it was somewhere around 04, 05. And uh, over the years, you know, up to 210, down to 200, up to 220, maybe down to 211 early, early this year, late last year. And then just got up to this, you know, amount where I was like, you know, the, the fat pants I'd bought, the 38 waist was starting to not fit well. And, um, you know, starting not real health concerns, but, you know, just some issues internally thinking, well, you know, I probably shouldn't feel like this and I'm about to turn 45 in in August this coming summer. So I'm just going to stick through with it because, you know, I'm seeing the weight come off. I'm liking what it's doing. I don't think I'm eating anything out of line, you know, very, very good um, beef if possible, chicken breasts, uh, salmon and fish if I can, and vegetables just, you know, within reason, salads here and there, uh, lots of green vegetables, I said, a lot of broccoli and uh, Brussels sprouts, especially Brussels sprouts in my air fryer, which has been an appliance that I've just absolutely loved over the last couple of years in addition to uh, my Instant Pot. And I just went with it and just continued to see some uh, weight uh, fall off. And I believe I was down 25 pounds in the first, let's say 50 days or so. I was about averaging that. And I was like, well, this is just, you know, great. And, and incredibly, of course, COVID and the quarantine and the shutdown turned to 30, 40, 50 days, just like that. And, uh, some, when you're, at home and your routine is not really changing. You're kind of overseeing the kids. You're not really leaving, but for anything, any emergencies only basically grocery shopping, you're just kind of going with it. And, uh, March 20th turned into April 20th turned into May. And all of a sudden it's like, well, May's already here. And, uh, you know, it's spring. I forget how late the kids school was officially, you know, of course, you know, full on, uh, homeschooling, so, uh, and that was seemingly going well. The teachers had a good routine, you know, going Google Classroom for the third grader and uh, uh, Dojo was one of the, the apps that they were using um, and Seesaw in for the first grader and it went well. And the kids, you know, we had a couple of computers and they would entertain themselves, take care of some classwork, get it done as they needed to. And they each had two Zoom meetings, you know, per week, seeing their teacher and seeing their classmates and and things went well. And I just kind of stayed out of the picture, let them do their thing, kept my nose down, continued to do my 20 minutes of uh, mobile time, uh, activity, Fitbit recognized. And I just decided to get outside as soon as I could and just start walking. I've always enjoyed uh, getting outside and walking. And I try to walk as, as fast as possible for a little bit of exercise. And, uh, we had such a weird winter where I think early May it was spitballing snow. And then 10 days later, we hit like seemingly 90 degrees or it was it was pretty much close to that. So it was a very, very weird uh, winter the way it uh, transpired, of course, with the weather and then also with, with COVID. And our spring was it seemed like it was a day or two long and I actually joked about it at one point because we went from springtime to 90 in, in the span of a few days here in Vermont. Well, it finally you know, warmed up enough where it was just great to be able to get outside and and walk in the morning. Uh, May, late May, I was getting out and trying to get 8,000 steps a day, which I pretty much clocked out to that being about four miles. And 
was continuing with keto, continuing to see success. And, you know, by that point, I'm still absolutely 100% beer free. I learned, you know, early on that there is uh, no carbs in a lot of booze, mainly bourbon, whiskey, vodka, rum, uh, even tequila. So I was you know, having just a little bit here and there, maybe once or twice a week, I would have a drink, you know, on a Saturday night, unwind. That was about it. But really, I was staying, you know, 100% beer free, continuing to see great success. In the end of May, as the weather turned, I just got outside and started walking and started walking more and more. And it turned out that I've got this great route around my house. It's about two miles, just over two miles. And I would uh, do that twice and I would get four miles under my belt. And I was trying to get out um, early in the morning because come to find out, I've never thought of this myself as a morning person. Well, I was sleeping in the first 30 days of COVID. Like I think a lot of unemployed people were, and I love to sleep in. I stayed up to all hours of the night. The kids were taking care of themselves and I'm talking eight, nine o'clock, you know, not tremendously late, but you know, some days, especially the weekends sleep until 10, 11 o'clock because I had nothing else to do. And I told myself, well, I'm a night owl. I don't like the mornings. I'm, I'm going to sleep in. And, and that's what I did. Well, Come towards the end of May, I started just getting up a little bit earlier than I typically would. I had been doing at that point, uh, end of May, uh, keto for two months almost. And then about day 45, things really, really started to click mentally. And I wasn't questioning uh, my choices of what I was eating every day. It was just natural. I was just grabbing something and just you know, mowing it and it wasn't really missing anything when the kids and the family were sitting there eating pizza or uh, having a bun with their burger, that type of thing. I was just going with it. Wasn't missing breads, wasn't missing pizza, wasn't missing even beer for that matter. Uh, I was really enjoying where things were and things were really clicking. Well, all of a sudden I started getting up earlier and earlier and I was getting out of the house to get uh, these steps in uh, as early as possible to make sure I got in my 8,000 steps because me, like so many Americans, when I was sitting at my desk, we were lucky if we would get, you know, 2,500 steps in a day, which is just over a mile. And uh, I was, you know, just getting as sedentary and, and lazy as one could be while not wanting to get out of the house, especially through the winter when here in Vermont can just be so brutal, so long, so depressing. And uh, I was getting out of the house in late May, early in the morning, and was getting my steps in by 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock. And every single day, I was uh, getting in 8,000 steps by, I would say, 8 o'clock. And, and really, it was by 8.59. And I just started hashtagging 8,000 by 8 on May 27th. And it's July 7th now. And it's been, you know, what is that, 40 days, 40 couple of days where I think only twice I've missed having my 8,000 steps by 8.59. And of those couple of days, I had them no later than 10.30. I've had days that I've had 12,000 steps, 16,000, 18,000. I've been averaging about 100,000 steps a week, uh, which is, turns into quite a few miles. I think I'm averaging 50 miles essentially a week of walking and haven't been on many hikes. We've been on family bike rides and what have you, but that's been my steady go-to. And what made me feel good and feel that I was doing the right thing was I've happened to have two different people in my walk and essentially neighbors, if you will, that have uh, commented on seeing me every morning, asking me how much I've walked and uh, I've been out there and I've been doing it. And that's been my really my, only my physical exercise that I've done besides some lawn work here and there. And um, things are working for me and, and I can't really complain. So I've been tracking, you know, how many days since March 30th really is this has gone along to really see in my mind, really see really, really on a calendar, how this was shaping up. And I realized that a hundred days was coming up. And then I started thinking, well, geez, only 20 days past that's a, a third of a year. And look what's happened in, in a third of a year. And I can go into it, but we've all seen the news. I'm super active on Twitter and social, and it's impossible to not see just the incredible garbage, if you will, that's going on, not only in the world, but of course, closer to home here uh, in the United States and social media only. I'm not going to use the word sensationalize, but what it does is, is really put a magnifying glass on any piece of news that gets out there because of its capability to completely go viral in a very, very short period of time. And that's all out there. We're all aware. And 
I am so thankful that 100 days in that I just, it's hard to say foresight, but I had a little bit of thought that, well, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Let me try something that I've been curious about, that I've heard success about, and see if I have success and see where it goes and see where it takes me. I'm unemployed at the time in late March, still am. I had no idea how long that was going to last. Knew that I had worked really for, you know, pretty much at that point, you know, it had been really 12 years, I think, since I had had a week off. Uh, days here, long weekends there, five, six days, you know, but always checking work, always doing, you know, always on email, like we are constantly connected and things like that. But it had really been forever since I had had a full on vacation. And all of a sudden I had this unemployment and I am in exceptionally grateful for that decision I made all by myself, no one else in the house. I don't know anybody else uh, personally that's doing it now. I'm a member of a couple of Facebook groups where I just kind of follow along for verbal support, I guess you could say, or written support, but also words and suggestions. And of course, as one of the benefits of social media is things like that, Facebook groups where you have a sense of an online community, even though you don't know people, you are in their circle. And that's certainly been a savior, so to speak, our social media circles here over these last 110 days. And, and I'm grateful for the Facebook communities that I'm a member of because, you know, we haven't been out of the house seeing music. We haven't been out of the house you know, hanging out and, and partying. And we're slowly, slowly here in Vermont getting back to some sort of way to do so. I, I was able to see some live music just a couple of Saturdays ago outdoors. Uh, we are playing baseball, my son's team. Uh, recently, the games just started last week. So uh, a little bit of a normalcy there. But, uh, you know, the Canadian border is still not open. Um we watch these other states' numbers go crazy, including Florida, where my parents just came back from three weeks ago. They live there eight months of the year. Um, I've been able to see my parents a couple of times now after they observe the quarantine. But, you know, we are all of a sudden, you know, quickly approaching mid-July. You know, we're one week from that. At that point, we are, you know, four months into all of this heavily. And uh, I'm four months into the, the keto diet, and it's been something that I never thought I'd be able to stick with. But uh, I happened to hear this quote, uh, listening to a podcast, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, and uh, it really, really struck home. And it, it's out there, and it's, it's apparently well known, but once I heard it, it made sense to me. And then I just kept hearing it over and over and over again, and it's, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And I knew that that was the case with me when it came to uh, my beer drinking, to the diets I've had in the past. And I wanted to make a point of really uh, sticking through with it. And, and when I heard that quote and I was 45 days-ish into the diet, I was like, this makes perfect sense. I've been telling myself the whole time, you know, I can't allow myself to have these cheat days because I know that if I give an inch, I'm going to take a mile and I can't, uh, you know, bring home a four pack of IPAs because I'm going to bust them open and drink them all. Well, I can say that it took about 75 days, I think, but I did finally have a little teeny bit of beer and uh, it's within reason. It was actually billed as a wheat wine. Uh, my friend Andrew at uh, Good Measure Brewing in Northfield released a 16% wheat wine that I was able to sample when we went down to pick up some bottles uh, about a month ago. And the only other beer I've had is we went down and visited him a couple of weeks later and uh, had a couple of beers on tap, including which pretty much was a, a pink lemonade uh, farmhouse table beer, if you will, and a couple of others. But we're talking three ounces at a time. So I think I've had 12 ounces of beer in 100 days now. And, um, you know, just a little bit of booze here and there. And I've only gotten tipsy, I would say, once. And I have learned and, and learned at that point that, of course, you have a, a little bit, you're a little bit more of a lightweight on keto when it comes to alcohol. And also it slows down the uh, ketone production and the weight loss when you drink, uh, namely, a couple of days in a row because your liver refocuses its work on 
burning off the alcohol than it does producing ketones. So I decided, well, that's not great. So when I do drink, I'm only going to have a couple of ounces here and there. And I was, you know, pretty much, I would say 30 pounds after a, a couple of months and things have slowed down a little bit. But that being said, I, I still lost 12 pounds over the last month. And, uh, I was never one to weigh myself, but I have actually kept an eye on it daily. It's been interesting to see uh, a little bit of weight gain, a little bit of weight loss, and what happens as a result. I'm going to say that I have had uh, two cheat uh, meals, uh, one at, one on purpose, one accidentally, so to speak, uh, in those 100 days. And that was Father's Day. I stopped by for a maple creamy in Swanton on the way home from my parents and had that and uh, just uh, in utmost joy. That's soft serve for you folks out of Vermont, but we'll do a show note to a creamy so you can tell the difference. So a uh, maple creamy. And then the next day uh, we were picking up some, uh, some supplies at Home Depot. We're going to be redoing my son's room. And we ordered from Wings Over Burlington. And, and I just ordered right online real quick, not really paying attention. And instead of ordering regular chicken wings bone in, I ordered boneless. So of course they were breaded and I just didn't want to waste them. I figured what's the harm. I'll, you know, have a couple. And then I, I couldn't stop because the way I do anything is the way I do everything. And, um, you know, the next day, probably a couple of days later, I weighed in and of course I was up two pounds. So I had to, uh, relose that, but you know, now it's, a hundred days. And I don't know if or when I want to stop because I'm really worried about going whole hog back into my old, you know, drinking habits. I, I have a cellar full of beer. That's a lot of sours and stouts and what have you. And I've added to the cellar since uh, I've been on keto, but I haven't, you know, opened anything myself. And I'm really wondering if I'm going to be able to enjoy, say, eight ounces or 12 ounces of beer, like I have been three or four ounces of booze, rather than enjoying 64 ounces of an IPA, because I drink four tall boys in one night. And, you know, worse than that is it's the $16 per night that that adds up to. And while alcohol booze, I should say, may be a little bit more pricey at times, you can also find some good deals and there's still some plenty of great uh, bourbons. And I just finished a bottle of Bacardi that mixes with seltzer fantastic and it was like 10 bucks. So it's a little bit more of affordable at times to drink, but you only need this little bit. And, uh, you know, I haven't been snacking very, very little snacks. Um, you know, you can, you're allowed to have so many nuts, namely cashews and macadamias and almonds. And, and I've only really had a handful, um, over these months here. I've really kept it to, you know, two meals a day max. I can't remember the last time I had breakfast, um, maybe breakfast for lunch or breakfast for dinner, but very little, um, breakfast, uh, one meal a day, a lot of fasting. And I got introduced, uh, probably now a couple of months ago or reintroduced, I should say to uh, bulletproof coffee. And that's a uh, grass fed butter and MCT oil, uh, in coffee. And I dug out a Chemex and my Chemex, and I've been doing that every morning. I've cut my coffee intake down to about 16 ounces and it's, uh, bulletproof with a grass fed butter and the MCT oil. And I love it. It's a little bit like a latte. Um, I've been drinking my coffee black for the last couple of years now. Drinking black coffee is truly one of the things I missed out on for all of those years where I was drinking uh, basically sugar and light coffee. And then when you actually start drinking good coffee that's black, you realize how tasty it really is and how enjoyable it can be. Well, I've been doing a bulletproof in the morning. And then usually if I eat my first meal somewhere around 1230, one o'clock, something, we try to make it light. These salmon burgers that have been at Costco have been a godsend and, and cook up nice in the air fryer and throw those on with a little bit of uh, sour cream and guacamole. And it's a great dressing on top of salad or on top of some cooked broccoli. And uh, dinners are just uh, a little bit of protein and a lot of said green vegetables as before. And every once in a while, I'll get a little lazy and it's, you know, bacon and eggs or tonight was sausage and eggs, but really enjoyed uh, cheese. Of course, uh, Cabot, more from the land of Cabot. I've been having a couple pound blocks of uh, cheddar and, and pepper jack here in the house and really been enjoying those. And um, try not to go overkill with that. And uh, I'd said early on, I'm not going to track this. I'm just going to see where it goes and the, uh, not tracking only on the scale. And it's been nothing but success, in my opinion, for uh, for 100 days. So. For those of you who may be curious about it, I 
can't right now encourage it enough. The biggest thing is just sticking with it. If you have an accountability partner, fantastic, go with it. Or if you just think you can keep yourself accountable, go with that too. Check out what you can and what you can't eat. Stock up the fridge full of healthy food. Make it easy to eat healthy. Of course, if you're big into uh, fruit, the keto diet's not exactly for you, but you can eat uh, berries in moderation. But over the, other than that, I haven't had a banana in a hundred days. Uh, you know, haven't had an apple, you know, just really lots of vegetables. And uh, if it grows above ground is the general rule. Those are the ones that are okay. So I've been doing that and um, had great success. So, you know, it's been the summer. It's typically when I'd be drinking way too much, especially on the weekends. And, you know, I've been home now for really for a uh, hundred days, unemployed, uh, not tying myself in, in knots with beer every weekend and losing that money and um, taking care of myself. I was starting to get you know, borderline depressed about how, you know, kind of work was going and, and the winter makes things oh so hard here in Vermont and, uh, unemployment when that hit March 20th, I was really worried it was going to send me into a a tailspin, but I just decided to take things under control. And, uh, keto was one way that helped me get there. And as I said earlier, just super, super grateful for taking the time to do it. Um, if you have any questions about it, feel free to shoot me a note and I'll, uh, you can send, uh, send an email to riff on podcast at gmail.com and I'll, and I'll answer it. But I want to move on really kind of from there and, and say that, you know, looking to really do some, some different things, not quite sure what I'm going to do with the day job, um, right now or when I'm going to go back. So I've been in discussion with, uh, friends here from the riff on podcast name, namely, uh, Mel Allen and, uh, Andy James. And we're talking about doing a new thing here, uh, in Vermont and, uh, base a podcast and a, a podcast channel, a media channel, so to speak around Vermont. And we've named it all roots VT spell that as you will. You'll hopefully find us either way. I'm picking up, uh, picked up both domains, but we're going to be launching a podcast that's based around Vermont and the wondrous people and business and places that it is. We're 251 towns and cities strong. As I mentioned earlier, 620,000 or so people strong the land of uh, a couple of great colleges, of course, about 75 breweries and seemingly growing, uh, all the time. We've actually had one open during COVID and uh, actually I believe two open during COVID and another one on its way. Uh, Lots of great restaurants. Of course, they're under much duress right now and we want to talk about them, but we're going to be kind of going into this with helping spread the word, the gospel, if you will, of Vermont. And we're launching that soon. It's called All Roots VT. It's technically A-L-L-R-O-O-T-S-V-T, uh, allrootsvt.com. It's going to be All Roots VT podcast and a YouTube channel, media channel. We're going to do as much video as possible, perhaps even simulcasting, if you will, of the uh, podcast and uh, just spreading the word of Vermont. Uh, we are... Th- I've turned into the envy of the nation, so to speak, with how we're dealing with COVID. And our governor, Phil Scott, Republican, very conservative, uh, I guess not really the right term, but very, very uh, um, reserved Republican that has been against Trump for a while now and has been doing really a great job here. I'm going to even have someone talk about Uh, politics during the All Roots VT podcast. And the idea is Mel, Andy, and I, it's not just about us, of course, it's about all of the people that make Vermont a wonderful place. So we're looking for hosts, co-hosts, people that want to just guest on a podcast. If you have interest in doing so, you can either email riffonpodcast at gmail.com and we'll get it, or you can email allrootsvt at gmail.com. And we're definitely looking for some people to jump on and do some things with us because it's not meant to be about the three of us. It's meant to be about Vermont and and Vermont strong and the Vermont people and businesses that make it tick. So we're pretty excited about launching that. Maybe we'll get some episodes up here in July. We are uh, just starting to get things underway. I've got the uh, the logo done, the social channels kind of locked up, and we're interested in, in seeing where that goes from here. So Riff On Podcast may get put to bed here eventually. It's been 
I just couldn't believe it when I looked at it earlier. It's been a year and a half plus since we've done an episode, which when I look back at 2019, Mel, Andy, and I really only had a chance to get together a couple of times. And here in 2020, maybe once, that was a couple of weeks ago around a campfire where Andy was the one that really pushed us and said, hey, how about that podcast network that we've been talking about? And it's going to be a network, so to speak, but it's really going to be one just channel on uh, the All Roots VT podcast and that all of the subjects and all of the matter and all the topics are going to just go down to this one channel and they're all going to be pushed out through that one, All Roots VT. So it'll be fun to see where it's going. So stay tuned. We'll definitely be publicizing here on the Riff On podcast when that launches I'm glad I was able to get this out here tonight, this episode number 12 of the Riff On podcast, and really talk about namely the keto diet. That's what really what I wanted to do, and I wanted to get my voice out there for the first time uh, in a while to have it out there, talk about All Roots VT, but also really talk a lot about keto. It's been 100 days. It just blows my mind that it's been 100 days that I've been doing it. You know, we've really been under quarantine, if you will, for really 100 and. 20 days now and it's just starting to blow my mind how seemingly fast time is starting to go by the days of the week have been blurring really for all 120 days but i'm amazed at how fast the weeks go by now and with uh we're playing some baseball and and professional sports are starting to loosen up time is only going to go by faster but right now as we say there's there's no end in sight of this. It's going to be interesting to see how schools re-enter. Of course, they already have some recommendations in place as to how they're going to have it. But uh, Harvard just announced it's going to be all online classes for 2020, 2021. And, oh, by the way, they're still going to charge $49,000 to do so. So that could be the first trickle of what could be many colleges to really go that route. So when that starts happening, people are going to start looking at things, of course, Working from home, telecommuting is not going to change anytime soon. So that's going to be a wonderful thing for many people. I was doing that to begin with, uh, as is my significant other has been doing that for years. So that's nothing new. But all of a sudden, for me, still unemployed, waking up, not uh, getting out and and hitting the office. I've been getting up at 5.55 the last couple of mornings. I get in my 8,000 steps before 7.15 and I'm back and I have... Um, getting the kids ready for their day camps before, you know, eight o'clock and I'm back and uh, trying to take care of some personal things here, including some personal things around the house, some honeydew lists, uh, have a new bedroom to, uh, to renovate here and uh, taking advantage of this time. And the best decision I made come the end of March was taking care of myself and not losing sight of uh, the potential opportunities I had with what was going on with the changing days and the changing environments. And so it's the best thing that uh, I could have done. I'm, I'm so, so, so super grateful that I took that time and uh, I'm going to stick with it. I really am. I'm going to re- reintroduce beer uh, responsibly and you'll certainly know about it if you follow me on Twitter at Hop Snobbery. But uh, every morning you're actually seeing my check-ins of my 8,000 steps by 859 and hopefully maybe you found a little bit of motivation by me doing so. And um, right now I'm... Uh, f- 48 pounds down and I'm approaching the lowest I've ever been. I've got about 14 pounds to uh, do that, uh, hit that, and and I'm going to do it. I've got a wedding I'm going to in a couple of weeks. Essentially, the oldest nephew, if you will, in the family is getting married, 25 years old, and I'm going to go out and uh, buy a new shirt. And I've been buying some, you know, some, you know, large shirts and some 36 shorts and some 36 pants. And and I like the direction I'm going. And my ultimate goal is uh, at least 173, which I believe will be the lowest I've ever been since God only knows when. And also to fit into everything I own, at least when it comes to pants and shorts. And I am going to do that because I own a whole slew of pants that I've haven't fit into in years and years and years when I just let it all go back on. So 
I'm going to leave it at that. We're approaching about 40 minutes here, and I thought that's a good responsible amount to be. We're going to hope to get the All Roots VT uh, episodes in that 30 to 40 range, ideally, not too much longer. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. Uh, drop a note. Let me know what you've been listening to. Give a, a like and a review on the Riff On podcast on iTunes, wherever you listen to Apple Podcasts, uh, Google uh, Podcasts, Pocket Cast, wherever you listen to your podcast, Spotify, and be on the lookout for All Roots VT. Something's going to drop here on, on the Riff On podcast that points you in that direction, but we're really, really excited about what we can do with Vermont, and stay tuned uh, for more information on that. We're hoping to go live soon, and thank you very, very much for putting up with me. My name is Eric D., and tuning in to the Riff On podcast. Podcast.